Hi, my name is Brian. I'm going to be talking about uh, SigHash no input. It was something that I was asked to speak about. It is um, currently not deployed, but it is an active proposal. Uh, so just really brief about who I am. I have a software development background. Just left uh, Ledger X uh, last week. Uh, so that's an exciting change in my life. Um, uh, the slides are gone now. Thank you. Also, I contribute to Bitcoin Core usually as a code review. Uh, all right, so in order to talk about what SigHash no input proposal is, I'm gonna talk about SigHash flags. To talk about SigHash flags, uh, this goes back to, um, I guess it goes back to how a transaction is structured, the data structure for a Bitcoin transaction. And um, in the script SIGs where you have a signature for, um, for proving that you have authorization to spend a coin, uh, these these signatures are constructed in a certain way, and there is actually a, a single byte appended to a to a signature uh, that specifies in, in what way um, uh, was the transaction signed. So there's a few different sig hash flags that are implemented and have been deployed since the beginning. Um, the most common one that I use is sig hash all. Uh, that means um, um, sign everything uh, except for the scripts. Um, there are some others as well. Sikash anyone can pay is another example um, where you only sign a current input and then everything else in the transaction is not considered part of the signature. It's not covered under the commitment. So there have been many proposed improvements for the Sikash types where you say, well, maybe you only want to sign certain aspects of the of the transaction. And you could say, I'm interested in spending these coins under these conditions, but I'm also not interested in any of these other details which we're going to ignore. And so many different SIGHash flags have been proposed uh, for, for how to do this, including um, SIGHash no input, but also others uh, such as, um, uh, basically you'd imagine masking out different parts of the transaction. So any part of the data in the transaction that you can imagine, there's been a proposal for a SIGHash flag for either um, considering it super important or completely irrelevant and that you, you're fine with any sort of alternatives being proposed on the network uh, uh, without causing your signature to become invalid. So specifically SIGHash no input, uh, the, the way that this works is that the idea is that you don't actually care what specific input is being provided. You don't care what the transaction ID is. It provides the input into the transaction. However, you do care about the amount. Um, very early on in 2015, this was actually proposed as a malleability fix before Segwit was proposed as a malleability fix. Uh, the problem though is that SIGHash no input is actually somewhat dangerous uh, especially in the context of a malleability fix. So it was um, not selected by the community. <laughs> and then we got SegWit. Um, there is a, a uh, proposal written, BIP 118, uh, written by Christian Jacker. Um, all right, well, this is a bunch of text um, about, about something called application-specific pub keys, uh, which, which is basically suggesting that um, uh, SIGHash no input should only be used in certain situations. You should not use it for everyday transactions. Uh, instead, you should only use it for pub keys that you've specifically created for the purpose of taking advantage of this SIGHash no input feature. And I'll, I'll show why in a moment. Uh, but this goes also back to why SIGHash no input was not selected as the malleability fix because it's uh, actually quite dangerous. Um, and this is because any input can be swapped into the transaction as long as it has a valid signature. Uh, and the signature with SIGHash no input says you don't actually care about which input it is as long as the amount is correct. Um, uh, 
so specifically, to cache no input has received recent attention because the Lightning Network developers would like to use it for something called watchtowers. And I believe there's either a Lightning Lightning talk uh, today or tomorrow, and uh, that will make more sense. But essentially, um, uh, you want to be able to broadcast certain transactions to to enforce the rules of the Lightning protocol. Um, I already mentioned the malleability fix. Um, there's also another Lightning Network proposal called L2, which is very confusing because Lightning Network is considered layer two. So it's, I think it was supposed to be a pun, but it's really just confusing. Um, all right, so there were two other Sakash no input proposals. One was um, for a uh, for an opcode, and then there was also one I think from Johnson Lau uh, for for his uh, either script v2 or Sakash v2. Uh, I think that is possibly using like a bit mask approach. And uh, so that's that's the overview of Sakash no input. I will be back later for other talks. Sorry, what, so you said it's only of what? Yes. So, it, it, so SIGHASH no input is the idea that you only want the you only care about the value of the input. You don't care about the actual transaction ID. So the transaction ID is no longer a requirement under the signature. Um, Yes, <laughs> yes, the pub key has to say the same, but um, otherwise it's identical. Well, anyone can choose the outputs that are going to be spent as long as they're actually valid according to the signatures that they're providing. So that's actually why it's dangerous, because if you were using SIGHASH no input um, in daily life, um, there was a slide back here. Um, for, for like uh, as your daily spending Bitcoin wallet, um, that's where things can get a bit a bit uh, dangerous. Um, um, the issue here is that anyone with a with a signature can construct a different Bitcoin transaction that would still um, be valid. So it's not just you don't have to just worry about miners, but also uh, whoever you're giving this data to like the Bitcoin transaction data. All right, thank you.